kitchen. I am John Selby, and today I'm going to do a, um, a classic kind of dish that I would eat on a Sunday afternoon myself. This is kind of down-home southern cooking we're doing. First, we're going to do a, a, um, a Cajun spice chicken breast. Chicken breast is so popular, boneless chicken breast. Right here it is. I, I boned it out of the whole chicken last night. And it's been coming to room temperature about an hour. If you're going to cook something, it really needs to be at room temperature. It's going to be seasoned with a Cajun rub. This is um, was originally invented by Paul Perdon, the famous Cajun chef. He wrote the most popular Cajun cookbook, K. Paul's Kitchen. And the mixture here, I, I can get you a recipe later, but it's one tablespoon, one tablespoon paprika. One tablespoon or one teaspoon cayenne pepper, one teaspoon onion powder, one teaspoon garlic powder, one half teaspoon thyme, one half teaspoon oregano, three quarters teaspoon black pepper, and three quarter teaspoons white pepper, all mixed up with two teaspoons salt. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this chicken breast. And we're going to put it on a little plate. And then you'll notice that the chicken breast is pretty thick. So we're going to put it down with the ugly side down, shabby nice side up, and we're going to whack it a little bit just like that. Get it really nice and flat. So it's about the same thickness all through, so it'll cook evenly. Now that it's all smushed down, we're going to put the Cajun spices on it. The paprika, the salt, the garlic, the onion, the oregano, um, the thyme, the white pepper, and the black pepper. You see we're putting a pretty darn good thick covering. We're now going to rub it all in like this. Years ago, chicken was all farmyard chicken. Now chicken is mostly factory chicken. It's lost a lot of flavor. So dry marinades are what are used to make up for that lack of flavor. A dry marinade does better than a wet marinade because it doesn't get it all wet. So when you go to cook it, it will brown it. So we don't need too much, but we want a good little heavy covering. And we're gonna just rub that all in. And then we're just going to kind of let it sit. Normally, I let this sit about an hour. Um, today, we're just going to let it sit while, while we're working on it. Next, we're going to get the okra going. This is okra. Okra is a wonderful southern vegetable originally from, um, from Africa where it is called gumbos. So mainly you hear of a gumbo soup, the main ingredient is okra and a gumbo soup. Usually because it has these kind of goopy little seeds inside, most people don't like it unless they batter it and deep fry it and somehow that keeps all the goop from coming out and keeps it from getting slimy. I always do it a little bit differently. I try to make it like green beans in my kitchen. So you can see I have a little pot here and I'm gonna put it on high. That's cold water, I'm starting it cold. When you make green beans, you normally, in, in French or European cooking, you have a big pot of salty water, boil it as hard as you can, throw it in, cook them a few minutes and they're done, pull them out when they're bright green and crispy. You wanna eat the okra the same way, bright green and crispy, but you start it off, you, you start it off in cold water, and as soon as it kind of begins to look like it's starting to boil, it is done. We add a little salt, not like that. Okay. Now we're going to work on the potato salad that we're making today. Here we have some of the ingredients. We have potatoes, we have eggs, we have bell pepper. Here's some more okra, we aren't using that. We got little red Chinese chili peppers, and then we got parsley and some lemon. Most of that is what's going into the potato salad, along with garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, 
pepper, the chopped chili peppers, and parsley. And of course, eggs, chopped boiled eggs. Okay, we're getting this going right now. It's always best for making potato salad to use a big bowl. Um, the reason why is you don't want to break up the pieces too much. Now, I went ahead and cooked the potatoes. Here are my chopped up potatoes. When you're making a baking potatoes, what you do is get little taters, small taters in the skin, and then put them in cold water. Do not soft them, put them in cold water, cover them with cold water, start them on lowest low. The idea is you want to, over about an hour or so, slowly bring them to the boil, and at which point, because they've been cooked slow, they're done through and through. You can usually test how they are by poking, poking kind of a sharp chopstick into them, and if it goes in without too much resistance, then they're about right. But the idea is you don't want to boil them. If you boil them, you will denature them. They'll lose their flavor. And even though they're vegetable, they'll actually dry out because they get so hot. Their cells explode, turns to steam. The wonderful vegetable juices steam off. And somehow you've wasted your potatoes at that point. Okay, the, the okra is starting to boil now. So we're just going to turn it down a little bit and go on and get to making these potatoes. So there you go, the potatoes. Oftentimes people put a little onion, we aren't doing that today. Then we're going to add to those potatoes, we're going to add a little, a little onion powder. That looks pretty good to me. Now I'm gonna add a little garlic powder. You notice I don't measure anything. Well, I always cook just by kind of, um, just how it looks to me. Many years ago, over 30 years ago, I went to work at a Chinese restaurant here in Tuscaloosa because I love Chinese cooking so much. The head chef was a man, we just called him Mr. Tao. We couldn't actually say his first name, if you will. And, um, but his name was Mr. Tao. And he had reported to the farm in Taiwan when he was seven years old and then worked his way up from the farm to the kitchens of Taipei, becoming a master chef in Taipei, that he was hired by Professor Ron Robel at, at the University of Alabama, a professor of Oriental history and languages, to come to Tuscaloosa and open Tuscaloosa's first Chinese restaurant. Well, Mr. Tao taught me to cook, and I have been into cooking ever since. Mr. Tao did not use recipes. He just knew what he was doing. He would just go in there and eyeball it. So like for today's food, we kind of think of this much potatoes. Well, let's see how much egg goes with that. Maybe 20% egg, maybe another 20% um, chopped bell peppers. So we're gonna add the bell peppers there. It looks about right, 20% chopped bell peppers. Then let's see, do we add the egg yet? Uh, let's add maybe 20% eggs. We're trying to get about as much egg and, um, and bell pepper and uh, celery and everything else as we have potatoes. So we're just kind of looking here at the volume of the potatoes, the volume of the celery, the eggs, and, and the green peppers. And the idea is, is that the vegetables and eggs should about equal the potatoes in mass. So, so that's what we're trying to do. It's just kind of balance things out. Now, potatoes and all those vegetables need some salt. So we're going to add a fair amount of salt, especially on the potatoes. They also need some parsley to kind of perk it up some. And then maybe a little bit of black pepper. Finally, we're going to add a little, little mustard, just regular old French's mustard, not too much, just a little bit. Mustard always goes good on potatoes. So what do we have here? We have potatoes. Boiled slowly, cooked slowly, but they did not boil. Cooked into skin and then peeled and cut into big chunks. Celery, boiled eggs, bell pepper, parsley, garlic powder, pep, uh, and onion powder. So we have all that there ready to go with salt. So we're now going to add some mayonnaise. And the idea of the mayonnaise is you don't want to add too much. If, you, if it looks all greasy, that's too much. You want to add just enough to coat it so it holds together a little bit. 
You never want it to taste like mayonnaise. Um, it, it, you want it to taste like potatoes. In all cooking, you know, there's the item potatoes. You want it to be potatoes, not garlic potatoes, not onion potatoes, not parsley potatoes, not, not bell pepper potatoes, but potato with a little flavoring of everything else. So if you put garlic powder, you should always, can I taste garlic? Can I not taste garlic? Yes, garlic, no garlic. If you think maybe you can, then that's just right. If you can clearly taste it, it's too much. If you can't tell it's there, it's not enough. So a just noticeable difference. That's one of the rules I go by in cooking all the time is cook to the just noticeable difference. Not any volume necessarily, not any quantity, but a noticeable difference in appearance. Now, the big bowl. You don't want to break everything up, have everything in here. And so I'm going to just start kind of stirring it around, like just kind of folding it so that the, the mayo and everything gets mixed all together. Oh, I am forgetting one thing. Dill pickles, dill pickles. Once again, we're at about, about maybe half as many dill pickles as we have eggs. Uh, the idea is, is that eggs are so rich, eggs are so rich to that you need some kind of counterpoint, the acidic, sharp counterpoint of the pickles. So got to have pickles. So then the idea is to stir it without breaking it up too much. If you've overcooked your, if you overcooked your potatoes at this point, you might be making mashed potatoes rather than potato salad because they will certainly break up on you. This looks just about ideal. Uh, then finally, for color and for flavor, you can see these are the chopped um, Chinese chilies, if you will. So we're going to go ahead and add them in there because they're so pretty. Here we're going to give it another stir. Okay. Mm. Yum. Tastes pretty dang good to me. So at this point, it's going into the refrigerator. And I recommend chilling it about an hour or so before um before you before you eat it. We're gonna let it chill for that hour. Okay, the next thing we're gonna get on the, the okra is looking pretty good right now. It's kind of greening up, you can see it's on lowest low, it's kind of brought to a to a boil there. You kind of thump on it a little, and when it begins to get softer, you know it's about right. Now we're gonna get back to our chicken breast. We we'll assume this has been out here, you know, with the spices on it about an hour flavorizing. But what we're going to do is we're going to blot it now when these are actually, these are coffee filters I buy in bulk. And they're great as paper towels. They're more heavy duty than paper towels. And they're really good for, um, for mopping up stuff and cleaning up stuff and all that. So what we're doing now is we're getting the moisture off the chicken. The, the dry marinade makes some of the moisture come out and, and it gets wet. And then um, we want to get some of all that excess spice off because we don't want it to be too spicy. We want to put a lot of spice on there at first, kind of to get it going. And, and then we're going to pat it dry so it will brown good while we're cooking. So going through a couple of these, but these, these things are cheap. Okay, just kind of wipe it down. And, and the idea is it's just to, to flavorize it and have it kind of pound it thin. Now, it looks pretty good. And we're going to add flour now. Flour is going to kind of make a little crust on it and give it some more flavor, hold the juices in and everything. And I usually just put a pretty good little bit of it on there and, and kind of pat it on, kind of like that. And we aren't really making a crust, just a little, a little, a little coating. And then once you get it on pretty good and, and get it down in all little nooks and crannies everywhere in your chicken, then I'm going to um, I just um, knock it all off over over um, over the, the garbage can. So now you can see I just have a light little coating on the chicken there, and we're just going to let it sit. Ideally. If you look, you see how it's kind of white looking. 
the white the white flour. You should let it sit about 15 or 20 minutes and let that white flour turn translucent. If you try and try and fry it before the white flour has absorbed the moisture, the white flour can burn in your pan and give it a better taste. We're going to just give it just a minute here and probably cook it a little too soon. But um, well, that's the idea is, is let, the, let the flour kind of absorb moisture and, and look a little translucent before you try and cook with it. So we're just going to sit that there and, and get this pan, this pan ready. This is the frying pan we're going to fry the chicken in. Now, you can use a cast iron frying pan. This is a aluminum capillon. It's a thin little pan. Ideally, you want your pan to be about the same size as what you're frying. If there's any area around it where the food isn't, it's going to burn out there where the food isn't. So <laughs> you want to avoid, avoid having too big a pan. Too big a pan, it won't brown right. This one delay, puts a lot of heat into it. And since we're frying, we want to um, we want to kind of char the outside, get it good and crispy, good and brown for flavor. But the interior, you know, we don't want it to get that hot. We want the outside at 400 degrees, but the interior at well done chicken, say 170, something like that. So anytime you're sauteing or frying anything like that in the pan, like a steak or anything, you're always kind of balancing the slow cooking of the interior with the fast cooking of the exterior. And, and they're both kind of in opposition. Chicken, of course, you never really eat it rare or anything. Um, you do you do want it to be cooked through and through. We'll talk about that in a minute, how to, how to tell when it's ready. But you can see, maybe you can see some of this is getting a little bit more opaque looking, still a little too white. It'll probably be okay. But we have the we have the um, potato salad made and in the refrigerator. We have the um, the okra um, cooking away here, doing doing well right here. Um, and then we have the chicken sitting there waiting, waiting for the flour to goop up a little bit. I have, I have butter ready, ready to go in just a minute when I start frying the chicken, some little pieces of butter. Um, this is an unsalted sweet butter. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Turns out that if we're gonna fry in butter, unsalted butter, any kind of butter has milk solid particles in it, which can burn. In standard practice, to turn the butter into clarified butter by warming it in a little pan or putting it in a microwave and melting it. And then the milk solids fall to the bottom, foamy stuff goes to the top, you spoon off the foam and, and pour off the clear butter, throwing away the solids so you have pure clear butter to fry in. I don't do that. This brand of butter I managed to get um, has um, low milk solids apparently, I don't know why, and I never have any trouble with it burning. Uh, actually, this butter is from, from Sam's, the Sam's Club store. Um, they're unsalted butter. Why it doesn't have a lot of milk uh, solids in it, I don't know. But it does a good, a good job of frying. You don't have to fry in butter. You could fry in, in, in vegetable oil, soybean oil, olive oil if you want. I'd recommend soybean oil over olive oil, actually. But anyway, we're about to get started on this in just a minute. I think it's about ready now. Um, does anyone have any questions? Okay, we're about ready to go. So you can see the flame coming up there. As you can tell, there it is. And we're going to let this pan get really hot. Have the pan wide open right now, and the um, the okra is is here, and uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, that one looks just about perfect right there. It's you can kind of dent it a little bit with your finger. It's not hard anymore. It's kind of like a green bean.
course, you can see how the um, how the pan, how the butter is, is is boiling up there and steaming. Usually, what you do is you you heat it, heat it, get the pan hot first because you don't want to heat the butter while the pan is warming. Um, you don't want it to get where you burn the butter like that's talking about a little milk solids in it, and you kind of watch it the wind it quits bubbling. As long as it's bubbling, it's driving off the water in it. It really won't be very hot until it quits bubbling. So you want to wait, wait about like right now, where it's kind of quit bubbling, and then put the chicken in with the, uh, the good looking side down. And you can see it fits the pan just, just kind of perfect there. The chicken cooking away in the pan. There should be enough chicken to serve two people. It's a pretty big breast, and uh, I will slice it in half. It will serve both my wife and myself um, for our Sunday dinner today. As soon as this presentation is over, I'm going to sit down and eat this dinner. Since so you know, we got to check it, it's still not quite you know ready to turn or anything. But you can see it's just cooking away there. Sometimes I kind of mush over in the middle a little bit. It might brown out around the edges and kind of have a light spot in the middle. Need to make sure everything's down in there. And yes, this smells really good. Dinner we are making would be a good dinner for cornbread. Okay, we're going to take a look. That's looking pretty good there. We're going to flip it on over. Looks pretty good. You can see some of the spices that stayed on there kind of browning out there. And um, oh, yes. Now, at this point, you just kind of start smooshing on it. And what we're doing is we're trying to find out. How done it is. And when I go by our just noticeable differences, think of the raw chicken, swoosh over it, <coughs> get a sense for how it feels. Then you put it in, and once you turn it, feel it, you feel it's a little thicker. Okay, that's a noticeable difference, not thicker, but stiffer, a little stiffer. And then about two more just noticeable differences of stiffness, it'll be done. So you have three or four just noticeable differences. Tell when your chicken is good. We're going to check that bottom side a little bit. And because it's been on the fire wide open now, it's good and hot. I'm cutting it down from high to medium so it won't get just too hot. You see how a little smoke is coming off and everything like that. We'll check it again. Looks good. Looks good. Not nearly good yet. See, I don't know if you can tell how gooshy it is. See, that's way, way too gooshy. Yummy. Sure does taste good though. Looks like it's beginning to dry out a little bit, so I was adding a little extra butter. Well, it was adding a little extra. It takes about 20 minutes to fry these, these chicken breasts. It takes about an hour to boil the um, to boil the potatoes for the potato salad. The important thing there though is not to overcook or get your potatoes too hot. 
not to denature the potato. Okay. Still, still kind of gooshy. i are getting kind of, kind of crusty on this back side here. Mm. Oh, yes. Still gooshy in some spots, still not quite yet done. I got the and I got the temperature set kind of on medium low now because we're just we've kind of crusted up the outside, but now we're trying to cook through the inside and we don't really want it to get too hot. If um and you see a little kind of white looking juice kind of coming out there, um, that tells you it's about done. And you don't really want that white juice to come out too much. You want to kind of hold it in your chicken. That's where all the flavor is. Okay. We're going to add some white pepper. Okra is always good, white pepper. On um, green beans, I put black pepper. but okra, I put white pepper. Then we're going to add a little parsley like that. Then uh, then we're going to add some butter, just a little bit of butter. Now, you know, you don't have to add butter at all, but that's just kind of a classic thing I always do. And make sure there's some water there. Don't drain all the water off if you're adding butter. You need some moisture to go with it, or what will it do? It'll be all greasy. You don't want it to seem all greasy. Now that's parsley, that's um, white pepper, that's a little bit of butter, that's water. And now I'm gonna add some, um, some lemon zest, fresh lemon zest, zested off the lemon, just like that, a zester. About that much lemon zest in there. And then finally to our okra, I'm going to add a little, um, a little paprika for color. So there you have it, um, parsley, the okra, the paprika, the lemon, um, lemon zest, a little more parsley, and that is ready to eat right there. So we have the, the, we have the um, chicken ready to go, and we have the, um, the potato salad all ready to go. So we're getting ready to plate this up.
You see, I cut that chicken breast in half, half for me, half for Linda. But you can see, you can see the whiteness inside. See how it's nicely browned on the outside? No pink, but a little juice. You see some juice weeping out of that meat now. That is a perfectly cooked boneless chicken breast with Cajun spices. Okay, and here you go. We're going to be ready to serve. And we can see we have the okra, the chicken, the potato salad. I'm going to add a little extra paprika to the top of it for color. I'm going to add a little more paprika. I like paprika a lot for color as much as anything to the okra. Then we're going to get a little more um, parsley like that all over the chicken. And then finally, last but not least, we're going to have some nice more lemon lemon zest to the chicken and then if we really want to get fancy with it because fat and salt add so much and acid fat salt and acid are the cornerstones of flavor we're going to add a little a little bit of chicken uh, or i'm sorry lemon juice just a little lemon juice to the top of the chicken and then finally if you like it may, it may well melt down a little bit. Some people would add just a little bit of butter to the top and just let that melt before, it, before it's finally served. So there, you, there it is. I give you Cajun, Cajun chicken breast um, with potato salad and okra all down Southern here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama this weekend at John Selby's house. Something I would normally eat on a day like today anyway. Uh, you. A beer would be good with it. Iced tea would be good with it. I'm probably going to wash it down with a modest Pinot Grigio from Aldi's this afternoon, just to tell you the truth. Cornbread. Cornbread would be a good addition. It looks like I have a few more minutes. I went a lot quicker than I thought it would. Does um, anybody have any questions? Very tasty. It looks very tasty. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hungry now. One of my favorite things to eat. 